that to the Hampton Court Concorde d'Elegance. And I want to show you a really interesting car. This is the Lindner Knocker car, uh, named after the drivers who, who raced it. Um, unfortunately, it has a bit of a sad history because it was involved in a very big accident at Montlhery in France. Uh, killed its driver, unfortunately, and a marshal, I believe, and there may have been other fatalities as well. And so, it, it, because of that, it, it spent a long time locked up in a garage in uh, France at the circuit. Uh, but it was eventually released and has been restored by Peter Newmark. This has to be one of my favourite Jaguars Thank you, of all it's time. It's one of mine as well. They produced 12 lightweights, didn't they? Yep. And I think this was number five off the lightweight production line in period in 63. Okay. Uh, so this went to Peter Linder. Yep. Uh, German, he was a German distributor. Uh, for Jaguar, Lotus, Aston Martin. Yeah. Yeah. And, but he was also a German touring car champion as well. So yep. he was a good racing driver. He was driver, a very good driver. Which is one of the reasons why he got the car. Uh, racing in 63. Um, First race out was, I think, was either Avis or Nürburgring. I should know, shouldn't I? Um, and to everyone's delight, um, uh, it was Nürburgring. First lap, he was actually leading the GTOs. Wow, well, that uh, was quite an achievement. That was quite an achievement. The GTO was the state of the art. Which is why Jaguar built these things in the first place, to compete yeah. with Ferrari, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and was it in that in no, this no. configuration no, no. then? No, 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 it was in the original lightweight configuration. Okay. Um, they, it only took on this form when uh, Linda decided that he wanted to take this car to Le Mans in 64. Okay. And Jaguar decided, although they'd officially pulled out of racing, that they'd given some support. Okay. So the car went back to Coventry uh, in, in the spring of 64. Uh, Sayer designed what you see now. So this, this beautiful um, curving yeah. rear shape, uh, which is unique. It is unique, uh, totally unique. And because it, I think it went there in about April and the race was what, June? Yep. So they didn't have a lot of time, hence the only way they could actually put this together quickly was to rivet it. Okay. Uh, but but Sayer then lent on his aerodynamic training and that's what he, that's what he knew and that's, that's how he designed it. Um, the form was to some extent dictated by the regulations at Le Mans, which stipulated that you had to carry a spare wheel. Yep. So they needed to have and that proper, shape, yep, so they could proper, get a wheel in there. Boot. Yep. But the engine is um, obviously a wide angle head, 3.8. Yeah, wide 3.8. No, it's on injection. It's on injection, it's on the Bosch slide throttle injection, which yep. is again quite rare. It's tricky. <laughs> um, you, tricky to set up. Tricky and to set it, up, yeah. Right. We were very lucky that, and I can't remember the name of the gentleman who, who did it, was, but he was still alive when we restored the car and he, and he, he, he set all that up for us. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. All 12 lightweights had a, an aluminium block and they were mated to a ZF gearbox. Yep. And one of the reasons why they were failing is because the, 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 the gearbox weight was, was leading to cracks. It's too much. Too it? much weight. So, so there was yeah. too much movement and they were, they were getting cracks in the block. So when it went back after Le Mans, back to the factory, uh, they put a steel block in it. Okay. Which is what it's got in now. And, and that's when it was churning out 340 odd brake horsepower. Now, obviously, it, it had a slightly tragic um, yes, it chapter did. in its history, and yeah. you, you completely rebuilt this, which was the most incredible job of work. It was. Um, I, and it's a credit to your organisation. I mean, it, you'd never know the external rivets, which are, again, a bit unique, very D type like. I mean, all and very these, expensive. And very expensive. <laughs> I seem to remember that each rivet was was quite a few quid each from memory. Uh, there's quite a lot of them in the car because <laughs> they are air, aircraft spec. Right. And they were hard to get. Number one, and they were expensive. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. But you had to pretty but much stitch to the whole car back together. We, well, we, first of all, we had to un unstitch it. We had to unpick it um, because it was a mangled mess. Crunched. Uh, and it was missing. It was missing the roof, it was missing the bonnet, uh, one door from memory. Um, so the first thing we had to do was completely unpick the car, which meant drilling out all the spot wells. So there's an awful lot of holes. So if you think about all these plus all the spot wells, yeah. it was just full of holes. Um, so we, we unpicked it completely to, down to the individual component panels. There was one straight panel in the whole car. That was it. Um, so every panel was flattened, repaired, and every hole was there are three different grades of aluminium in the car, and every hole 
was filled, not with weld, which would have been the easy way, yeah. uh, but with the correct grade of aluminium, we had a blank made that fitted in the hole, oh, good and we welded around that to That's, give it its strength. Yeah. So it, it was... A huge amount of work. Just a huge amount of work. A, a labour of love. Yeah, if you, if you asked the lad who did it, I think it knew it was in Loopy, but uh, <laughs> um, oh, the guys who worked on it. Um, so having, having repaired the panel, flattened it, repaired it, it was then reshaped. Um, we had to install modern spot welding kit like you see in the modern car factory today. That was a lot of money um, because it's, it, it, it takes an awful lot of, of power and, and electricity to put it back together. Yeah. Um, but it, it was well worth it. Yeah, it was well worth it because it's definitely one of the best looking uh, e types, one of the best looking cars anywhere, I think. I think. And I just love, you know, the, 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 the work that's gone into the making it aerodynamic. Yeah. Everything is flush. Yeah. Um, it's just a fabulous thing. Yeah. And I'm, I'm so glad that you put all that work into it and rescued it for us. I, 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 you wouldn't sell it to me, I don't, I don't suppose. Well, if you made me an offer. If I made you an offer, <laughs> it has to be the right offer. <laughs> well, it'd be a good home for it, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Yeah, it would. Thank you for saying so. <laughs>